Okay, so we want to create a display board. The first thing you need to do is measure your display board in centimeters for your width and your height. Because when you open up Microsoft Publisher like I've done here, what we're going to do is we're not going to use A4, we're going to make our own page size. So if you click on more blank page sizes here, it will take you to this screen. Now under custom, you can see I've already created my own here. This is my English working wall one. So if I show you how to create that, so create new page size, and all you have to do then is just type in your width and your height for your page, uh, for your display board. So I know that my maths one is 230 centimeters by 150. And then I can just click OK. And what that'll do is create it here. Now you've got the option to, when you do this, you could rename it as my maths working wall when you do that, which is just easier. Or you can do what I did, which was just to -click on, right click on it and press edit. When you've created it, you can double click on it and it'll bring you just like a normal document, apart from it's very big so that we can put our picture on. <coughs> now I've gone to Google and I've searched for an Olympic stadium because we're doing the Olympics and world records for next half term. We want a picture that's big enough so that when we stretch it up and we blow it up for our display board it's not blurry. That's really important so that it's a good enough picture. To do that you can go to tools which is just under the search bar here and then click on size. You can either go large or I tend to do larger than 4 megapixels and that's that 4 MP there and if you click on that it will come up with all the pictures that I think personally are big enough to not lose their quality when you stretch them so it's not blurry at all. Now I found one and I really like the look of this one for my display board. Um, so what happens here now is Google have got rid of view image which you could click on before. They, I think they've done that so that it's, it's making it harder basically for people to steal people's images. So when you click on it, it will take you to the website that it was on. This one was on some blog of somebody's. So you have to scroll and find that picture and then you can click on it and it will bring it up. Now what I mean by not losing its quality is this is a very big picture because when I zoom in, it still has all that quality that you can see. And that's what we want to see is really when we stretch it up and it's big. So I'm going to save that in my folder. I'm going to go back into Publisher and I'm going to go to Insert Pictures and I'm going to put that picture in. It looks quite small so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag it right to the corner I'm just going to stretch it out until it fits. I don't want to distort it by dragging it down because then that will change the proportion of the picture. What I'm just going to do is keep dragging it until it fits and then I'll crop it so that it just fills the page. And then you can just click off it and it's done. And that's it basically. And all then you need to do is go to File, Print and you will see that it brings up it as tiled which is how we want to print it. Um, the one thing that we do need to change however is we need to change it from I need to change it, I haven't got printers on here so bear with me if we did it A4 it would take an absolute age for you to cut it and stick it all together so we just want to change it to A3 and I'd probably also recommend I, I usually just do it landscape don't know why, I don't know if it changes anything I just usually do landscape. It's just easier to go across that way because I fit them by strips. Um, and that's it. And then print it and then just get chopping and sticking it together. And that's it done.